do, 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 do. That's what it looks like from the back. Okay. Okay. But what I really want you to think about and see, and if I get the angle right, it works. This is your diaphragm. So your psoas as it's coming out of your lumbar vertebra and your quadratus lumborum as it's keeping your ribs and pelvis connected all have a nice little dance party with your diaphragm there every single time it moves. Every single time it moves. It meaning your diaphragm moving. Okay, so whatever position you're asking your spine to be in, whatever movement you're asking for the spine, every breath you take, I know it's, now you're going to have that song in your head because it's in my head. Um, every breath you take, your psoas knows about it. Your quadratus lumborum knows about it. And if we want to go super, super, super deep down the rabbit hole, your vagus nerve is running down in front of that. So you're, I'm going to let you slide down that rabbit hole slide yourself, okay? Because different workshop, different workshop. <laughs> but we have to think about how if any, anything that's disorganized between abdominal strength and strength in the back, strengthen the obliques as stabilizers and neutralizers of the pelvis, not just as rotation and lateral flexion muscles, that all of that together comes to be the core to keep the upper trunk as the ribs and thorax and upper body and your pelvis actually connected and and working with each other in space, okay? Um, I As much as there is this idea of being square and being symmetrical, I don't really like to work with that idea anymore. It's actually incredibly frustrating to try and teach because it's a lie. Nobody is symmetrical. And to be square is, I don't know, that seems like a shape I don't wanna be, right? I don't wanna be a little taller, okay? So really what we should be working with is how can we use our core to keep this interaction of upper and lower trunk moving through space, okay? So if someone with a posture, what we're going to talk about where they're way too rounded and they're kyphotic, right? Why would we then give them more exercises asking them to come into more forward flexion when really what they need is the extension, right? Well, here's the thing. Anything attacked to your your ribs, anything attached to your spine, you know, moves with your spine, that's your ribs. So every movement you need to make to actually come adjust the thoracic spine has to have something to do with your breathing. Okay. So I just wanted to take that little moment and make you really remember that and, and see how high up your abdominals wrap around your anterior ribs, right? And coming around to the back of your rib cage, you can see this is your lat. I'm going to take him away. Now your lat, we all think is an arm muscle, but it still is a respiratory muscle as well. Okay. And you'll see that in a moment when we really start talking about how to actually fill up. Um, people don't talk about it as a, as a respiratory muscle very much, but it is. Okay. When you come around and see how your obliques, this is actually your, ex your external oblique. It's coming around very much down to those low floating ribs, if you have any, and it's really wrapping around 